Hey there everyone, it's JC, welcome back. As we safely spend time distant from each other, it's important now more than ever to share your beautiful handmade note cards. In this perfect pairing episode, I wanted to share three simple ways to make the envelope have just as much of a stunning impact as the card you just made. So here is my uneventful A2 sized envelope, very plain as you can see. Inside I have this card I made using the Festive Florets stamp set. There is a Festive Florets holiday card kit that has this stamp set, and nearly everything you need to make holiday cards if you're new to card making and stamping. To make the envelope match the card, one very easy thing to do is to use the same stamp set and stamp on the envelope. But instead of using the main color on the card, which is this beautiful teal, I'll highlight this accent pink. I'm going to make a peachy pink gradient on my envelope. First, I'll need my silicone stamping mat. Mine is very well loved at this point, but it helps keep my filming surface pristine. I'll gently tape down my envelope to my mat and overlay this mask I made. It is 2 inches by 3 and a half inches, and I'm taping it to the center of my envelope. I'm going to use the new Martian Terrain Mini Cube Set and my large ink blending brush to make a peachy gradient on my envelope. The card making kit comes with a small ink blending tool bundle. I'm starting with the lightest color, Pastel Sunrise, and starting at the top of my envelope, taking the ink down to about 3 fourths of the way down the envelope. Then I'll use Canyon Clay and take the ink down about one third of the way. No need to clean off the ink blending brush if you're going from lightest to darkest ink. So on my camera this looks very splotchy. One of the hardest things for me to do is to let ink blended panels sit and dry back. In the final result you'll notice the ink blending looks smooth and all it takes is a bit of time to dry and let the ink settle into the paper. I've brought the envelope with the 2 by 3.5 mask into my stamp positioning tool. I'm going to use the largest flower bundle in the coordinating stamp set to stamp a random pattern of flowers with pastel sunrise for a tone on tone look. I'm trying as best as I can to avoid stamping the bottom of the envelope. I'm not sure about other countries, but I know in the US this is where the postal service adds a machine to barcode. I know I've sent dark envelopes before and the machine will add a label with the barcode on the bottom, but anyway, I'll use the smaller stamps and an acrylic block to add little details here and there. Before I write in the address, I added some gold splatters as if they're gold snowflakes cascading from the top of the envelope to the bottom. Again, I'm avoiding adding too much to the bottom of the envelope for the machined barcode. I'll use Altenew's business address for these examples and write them in with the fine liner pen set. This set has three fine liner widths and a brush nib. I'll first use the 005 fine liner to add a dashed line all around the masked rectangular area. I'd make some practice strokes on a scrap piece of paper before going directly onto your envelope. Uh, don't ask me how I know that. This was not my first draft of this envelope. Now, I've had success with this style of lettering. This envelope is machinable as is, assuming your card is relatively uniform in thickness and isn't too rigid, otherwise you may need additional postage. You can forego the address on the front and add your recipient's name if you would like to do this next step. This next step will require you to place this card and envelope within a padded envelope or inside a package for safe delivery. I have my silicone mat placed on my work surface again. This time it's for the heat protection. On an acrylic block, I'm mounting this Joy stamp. I will also grab my wax seal melting beads in enchanted gold, my wax melting spoon, and heat tool. I will add enough wax with my heat tool to make a pool of about half the volume of the spoon. I'll check the viscosity of the wax. I don't want to pour it really hot, just enough so that it's fluid. Then I'll take my joy stamp and gently lay it on top of the pool of wax. Now I'm not stamping per se, I'm hovering the stamp so that I get the impression of the letters, but not all the negative space around the stamp. I'll hold the stamp and acrylic block steady for a few moments, and then gently lift the stamp from the wax. 
Let the wax cool completely before handling the wax. If you're not happy with the impression, the great thing is you can just break up the wax a bit and remelt it in your spoon and try again. But for me, I'll add a dot of glue to the wax to finish and close the envelope. This next example is really easy. I always neglect stencils, but they're a crafty essential. Again, I'm laying down my silicone stamping mat. This time, I'm using the wonderful wreath stencil for this next envelope. I'm really bad about cleaning off my ink blending tools, especially when they've taken on a lot of ink, but that's okay. I ended up getting a nice blend of whatever green I had on my mini ink blending tool and the Misty Moore Green from Nature's Wonders Mini Ink Cubes. So I put down a layer of that mix of green and then took my cleaner large ink blending brush and ink blended that stencil again. This time I rotated the stencil for pattern variation. I used the included berry images on the stencil to add red berries all around the wreath. Then I added splatters using the ink from mangrove root and an acrylic block. To finish this envelope front, I added this two stamp from Poinsettia and Pine Stamp Set, and then added the Altenew business address. That finishes the front of this envelope. I also decided to dress up the envelope flap itself. To do that, I'm using the Faceted Stars background stamp and Northern Shore mini ink cubes to stamp the pattern on just the flap of the envelope. I slid a scrap piece of paper underneath the flap to avoid getting ink on the rest of the envelope back. Then I used this mini belief stamp to add a touch more blue and mimic the brush lettering on the front of the card. Aside from the stenciling, this one is really easy to mass produce if you're in a bind for time. The card I'm putting in this envelope is this one. I used the Believe portion of the sentiment from the Believe mini stamp, so it coordinates beautifully with the envelope. Speaking of mass production, this final envelope is another one that you can modify to make many beautiful envelopes in one sitting. I've already got this craft colored envelope in my stamp positioning tool. I'm going to white heat emboss the main wintry home scene from Winter Wishes stamp set and offset the image off the card. I just want the house for this envelope. Then I'll take this Milky Way stencil and press my embossing ink pad onto it. Then white heat emboss the stars as well. What I've ended up with is a starry winter scene, clean and simple. You can leave it just like this and add your address, but I decided to decorate the envelope flap again. I'm using the Buffalo Plaid Builder Stencil and white heat embossing a strip of this angled stripe pattern across the top of the envelope flap, sort of like the traditional Postal Service Priority Mail Stripe. Speaking of Postal Service, I'm using this Postal Heroes stamp set to white heat emboss this sending you lots of love sentiment on the flap as well. To mimic the embossed texture of this envelope, I'm adding this gold heat embossed card. And that finishes this final envelope art example to finish off your holiday card stash. Hey, thank you all so much for watching this perfect pairings episode with me. 2020 has been quite the year, and I try to post videos every second and fourth Sunday of the month. If you enjoyed this tutorial on envelope art, make sure you like this video, share it with your all to new friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. Have a safe holiday season, and I'll see you in the next episode. Hello there! Are you still looking for project ideas and card making inspirations? Well, if you are, look no further. We have tons here at the Altony YouTube channel. You can also subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that we do upload. To help keep your creative juices flowing, we have a couple more videos that you can watch here too. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again really, really soon. Bye-bye.